Hello everybody, this is the Starving Martian, and did you know that we actually almost got a Dinosaurs Attack movie back in the late 1990s? It's true. Um, famous director Tim Burton was actually a big fan of these cards, no real surprise there. And uh, it was actually his number one pick at the time for his next film project. Unfortunately for him, the uh, studios thought that there were too many similarities with Jurassic Park. And they were afraid that it would be just uh, discounted as a Jurassic Park parody or ripoff or something. And so he went with his number two choice, which of course was Mars Attacks. Um, ironically, Mars Attacks would release just months after um, Independence Day. And everybody kind of wrote it off as a um, parody of that movie instead. So poor guy couldn't win for losing. But, uh, but yeah, so instead of um, Dinosaurs Attack... We got Mars Attacks the movie, and I'm I'm happy that that worked out that way. I think the uh, Martians, you know, that dinosaurs are great, but a dinosaur is a dinosaur. We we've seen killer dinosaur movies, you know. There's only one Mars Attacks Martian, and he's just very, you know, um, iconic. And I wouldn't have wanted to miss out on that. So, moving right along, this is card 14, lunch break. If you missed the first 13 cards, they're in part one of our look at Dinosaurs Attack. The uh, trading card series from Tops put out in 1988. Uh, so just click on my name, Starving Martian, you will find the Dinosaurs Attack playlist. It's also in the uh, Mars Attacks, the trading card playlist as well. So if you want to catch some Mars Attacks videos, they're there for you. So we've been looking at this card long enough. Let's move on to card number 15. This one's called the Colonel Shredded. Kind of a make-a-wish and see who gets the bigger half thing going on here. Uh, one of the running themes on the back of some of these cards is um, is uh, dispatches from the military. Official dispatch. Ooh, look at that. And um, now each one of these starts to get a little more desperate and a little more, you know, losing faith. As you do. Heartland Horror is up next. And I think my favorite part about um, this card is actually the pterodactyls. Up in the corner, abducting cows. <laughs> That's pretty cool. Anytime a cow gets abducted, I'm happy. Alright, card 17, Blue Water, Savage Death. And this card reminds me of uh, that scene... In Star Wars Episode One, where Qui Gon Jinn's all like, "There's always a bigger fish." Um, you might notice the dinosaur in this card has ears, which is an odd feature on dinosaurs. Well, that's because this guy is actually based on a monster movie called Gorgo. Now, Gorgo is that rarity, a uh, kaiju film made outside of Japan. In fact, it was made in uh, England. Which is why you get to see Gorgo tear down uh, Big Ben at one point. It's pretty awesome. It's a good movie. I recommend it. Track it down. You'll enjoy it. Next up is card 18, Taurus Trap. And while we're talking kaiju, there was a Godzilla book. Actually a series of, I think, like four of them published in the late 90s. And in the second one, I believe it was, uh, Rodan, who's basically a giant pterodactyl, actually has a nest on Mount Rushmore. So this card actually predates that. So there's that. Madness in the Streets. There's um yeah, a blind guy about to get eaten by a dinosaur. That's um that's what we needed. <laughs> the blind leading the blind. They shall both be eaten. All right, a lot of kaiju, a lot of um, Godzilla references this time around. This is clearly in reference to Godzilla here, what with the spikes running down his back and everything. And next up is Fast Food Frenzy. The Brontosaurus in the Burger Barn. And he does not want fries with that. Alright, and since we're talking Godzilla this uh, time around anyway, anybody know what happened to Godzilla when he stepped on a McDonald's? He got fallen arches. 
All right, I'm sorry. I, I apologize for that one. All right, so our next card is called the Behemoth Fries, which is not a giant order of French fries at the Burger Barn. So apparently dinosaurs and electricity don't mix, which comes too late to help this guy in the corner who's getting electrocuted himself. Next up is the Perfect Wave. Surf's up, big kahuna. London in Flames is our next card. And and I have to say, I don't know how all these people got themselves impaled on this guy. I mean, you'd almost have to be trying. <laughs> and, and yes, I see there's a burning building behind him that people are leaping out of. But, um... But still, you know, aim yourself a little. I don't know. Day of the Duckbill. And this is uh, one of our few plant-eating dinosaurs who's actually eating plants. Still manages to get this um, hunter killed by knocking his boat over and causing his friend to shoot him in the chest. And uh, the back of this card... We have a nice uh, TV interview going on here. Mr. Harley, I understand you witnessed the tragic accidental death of de duck hunter Fred Stanton. Tell us, in your own words, what happened. Well, we was out fishing, my son Amos and me. Suddenly, we heard a splash and a gunshot. And it pairs one feller shot the other feller square in the chest. After the dinosaur capsized their rowboat. Yep, it was an accident, but a nasty one. Real nasty. And so it still continues to amuse me that they actually got uh, people in to dress up and play the roles there and get their picture taken. That's great. That actually elevates the cards up, in my opinion, to a higher plane. Okay, Coasting to Calamity. This is what dinosaurs refer to as Meals on Wheels. And Soviets versus Damatronodons, or something like that. I'm sorry, I'm going to butcher every single dinosaur name, except perhaps the Tyrannosaurus Rex, I know that one. But, um, okay, so I've told you that the um, backs of these cards, most of them are uh, made to look like newspaper reports. This one is as well, but it's a Russian newspaper. And so it's done all in um, Soviet propaganda. Remember, this is the late 80s. And uh, the, so the back of this card's kind of funny. It talks about, you know, oh, these giant lizards, they're not so much of a problem. Only the, you know, corrupt capitalist nations uh, are, would have, or have trouble with something like this. And So there's that going on. All right, let's check back in with Dr. Elias Thorne, shall we, on our next card. Card 28, Saurian Secrets. Now, here's an interesting card, and it's also important to the story, so um, we're going to turn it around in a minute and uh, actually read through the back, but, um, but, but essentially what's happening here is this is a scientist on the space station. They're still up there, because frankly, if dinosaurs were destroying, destroying the Earth, I wouldn't be any, in any hurry to get down from my space station, but they're trying to reverse the effects of the, uh, the ray that caused this problem in the first place. So this guy is taking a nap, as you do, and he has his dream with this highly, highly evolved lizard man. So let's take a look at the back of our card. Alright, Prometheus Log, and you'll see more of these logs, more towards the end of the series. But it says, um, let's get a little closer. My staff and I have been working feverishly to reverse the catastrophic time tilt and send the dinosaurs back to their own era. Finally, after 40 sleepless hours, I slumbered, slumped over my desk and had a curious dream. Advancing ever so calmly out of the shadows was a kind of humanoid dinosaur, benevolent, with an enlarged cranium and an oddly comforting voice. It called itself a saurion. It explained that a significant difference between our species and the dinosaurs is that we humans 
with our evolved advanced minds understand the difference between right and wrong human beings have souls and throughout history we've attached cosmic significance to the eternal struggle of good versus evil all right so our next card is monster in the museum And the back of this card has nothing to do with monsters in the museum, but rather continues the story from the um, previous uh, card. And not to chew up too much of our time, so we're not going to read through the whole thing, but um, apparently um, there's a supreme monstrosity, which is an evil entity, an evil force that has caused this problem, and uh, it wants to use these dinosaurs to destroy the world and take over it himself. He's existed since uh, the early eras when the dinosaurs ruled, and he ruled over them. But now that there's no more, this is his opportunity to reclaim the Earth. And so um, Dr. Elias says, that must never happen, I shouted. Um, jumping to my feet, the Saurian smiled gently and placed his scaly green talon on my shoulder. And in that instant, I knew what, I had, what had to be done. So... Those uh, evil eyes we saw staring back at us in um, the first card belong to this um, evil entity that uh, we'll be encountering later on. But in the meantime, we still have devastation on Earth to deal with. Card 30 shows a kid strikes back. And you know, if that was a boy and not a girl, I would call him Bazooka Joe. But either way. Card 31, Our Forces Flattened. You know, some of these cards have almost a Garbage Pail Kids vibe to them. But this is another one of those cards that has a, um, you know, official military dispatch on the back. So this guy got himself stepped on real good. And I do like the expression on his face. <laughs> Here's the Cat Lady's Revenge on card 32. 33 stuck to that for a second. And so that dinosaur doesn't look like he's enjoying being shot in the face, as most of us would not. And here's our next card, Manhattan Island Swamped. So not just dinosaurs are coming through. Some of the actual environments from prehistoric times are encroaching on modern times, including these swamp areas and uh, giant killer dragonflies that feast on human brains. Sure, why not? Our next card is called Animal Wars. Not to be confused with Beast Wars from um, Transformers, although we do have a um, dinosaur here, Tyrannosaurus, like Megatron and a gorilla, and even Pterosaur, so I, <laughs> a lot of the Beast Wars characters show up here. And card 35, A Lady in Distress. This is one of the more iconic images from um, Dinosaur's Attack. In fact, I'm almost positive this was used on the... Um, the wax wrapper. So if you bought a brand new pack of these, you'd most likely already be familiar with this image. Alright, well that's about going to do it for part two of Dinosaurs Attack. Part three, we'll try to get through the uh, rest of the card series and take a look at the stickers. So um, stick around for that. Huh? Huh? No? Sorry, that, that was bad. I'm, I apologize. But until next time, this has been the Starving Martian. Hope you guys enjoyed this look at Dinosaurs Attack. We'll catch you next time. Bye.